It is Tuesday, May 25th. Happening now, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken emerging from a meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. This is day one of the Secretary's three-day Middle East tour. And the goal here is to shore up that ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. After 11 days of carnage that left more than 250 people dead, the people of Gaza are beginning the long, painful process of rebuilding. Let's get right to CNN Sadas Gold, live for us this morning in Jerusalem. These meetings between Secretary Blinken and the Israeli Prime Minister, very important to us. Yeah, these were very important meetings, and we just heard from both the Secretary of State and the Israeli Prime Minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, making statements after a meeting for more than an hour. The Israeli Prime Minister thanking the Secretary of State for what he said was the U.S. support of Israel's right to defend itself, mentioning that the U.S. has supported uh, helping Israel replenish its Iron Dome missile defense system, which helps intercept rockets that are launched by militants. But he did warn that if Hamas breaks the calm that exists right now, that the Israeli response will be Secretary very Blinken. powerful. Okay, now, <clears throat> Secretary of State uh, Blinken, for his part, also supported, he said, the U.S.'s uh, right, uh, Israel's right to defend itself. Uh, but he did speak about the need to reduce tensions and maintain the ceasefire. He also spoke at length about the need to help the people of Gaza, the humanitarian aid that is needed there to help the people there rebuild after all of that destruction. He did make an announcement the U.S. will make a significant contributions to rebuilding Gaza. He said there will be more details on that later today. Uh, he also spoke about the need to make sure that this aid that will be flowing into Gaza does not end up in the hands of Hamas, that they will somehow benefit from it. There is a big concern amongst the international community that this aid will uh, end up in the hands of Hamas and helping them rebuild their tunnels or rebuild their rockets arsenal. I think what is notable about what we heard from uh, the Secretary of State as well, there was talk about peace and calm. There was not necessarily specific talk about some sort of longer term uh, peace deal, peace solution, or a two state uh, solution just yet. This is the closest that the secretary came to making the, that sort of pronouncement. Take a listen. Prime Minister and I had a chance to discuss other steps uh, that need to be taken by, by leaders on, on both sides to set a better course for their shared future. Uh, as President Biden has said, we believe that Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live safely and securely, to enjoy uh, equal measures of freedom, opportunity, and democracy, to be treated with uh, dignity. And the Secretary of State will now meet with the Israeli Foreign Minister and the Defense Minister, and later today he will head over to Ramallah, where he will meet with the Palestinian Authority President and the Palestinian pr Prime Minister. John? Hadas Gold for us in Jerusalem. Hadas, keep us posted as these meetings progress. Thank you. And joining us now, CNN Chief National Affairs Correspondent Jeff Zeleny and CNN Congressional Correspondent Lauren Fox as well. Uh, so this ceasefire right now, you guys, it's holding. Biden is very much claiming credit, it seems, for his interactions with Benjamin Netanyahu. Does he get credit here? I think he deserves a measure of credit because he is the uh, U.S. president at this moment, at this time. So, I mean, he, uh, he engaged six times over 11 days in phone calls with Prime Minister Netanyahu, they've had a very long relationship, some 40 years. Ups and Not downs. always positive, <laughs> but certainly more up than former President Barack Obama. We all remember that very rocky relationship. So look, I think he gets credit for uh, being in place and negotiating this a ceasefire, presiding over it, largely because of the intervention of Egypt as well. But uh, the Middle East was never going to be uh, at the fulcrum of his uh, foreign policy. He did not want to fall into this really intractable situation. So we heard Hadass reporting there that there's no talk of a longer term uh, peace process. The Biden administration does not want to play that role. They have their eye on other uh, global issues and certainly domestic issues. So for, he gets credit because he was there. And it, if it holds, I mean, that's a very good thing. But he did not instigate this uh, because he is Joe Biden. No, that's right. This is a tough issue. It's For not sure. one that, you know, any president is likely to have success on. So he's not really going to go there in part because of that.